Imagine you have a cool idea for a computer vision project and you're excited. But then you realize that you'll have to create your own custom data set, which will take hours of cumbersome labeling. But you shall look no further. Today I want to show you how easy it can be with the amazing V7 tool. This tool can do so much more than just labeling. But today we'll take a look at the two most powerful labeling tools it has and how V7 works. Okay, now the first thing that we want to do is to create a new data set. And to do that, we just click on the button which says new data set. Now we will be asked to give a name for this data set. And in my case, let's call it construction workers data set. Construction workers data set. We can now continue and we're now at the point where we want to insert our images. And you already see how many different file types it supports. It supports JPEGs or image files, it supports um, movie files like for video data. It also supports volumetric data files like if you have a brain MRI scan, right, you have a scan of the whole brain, it will be a 3D image and much more. You can just include the, file, the images or the files directly per drag and drop, which we will do now in a second. Or you can also just include it via um, the command line interface if you want to automate it, for example, with a script. Okay, so here we have my little image for the construction workers and we can now continue. Okay, now we're at the point where we can give some instructions to this dataset labeling process. This tool is amazing for collaborating with other people. You can assign people to certain labeling tasks and here you can pretty much just give a description on how to label this data set. And here we can create new classes. For example, if you wanted to create the class person and define it as a polygon shape, right? If you want to have semantic segmentation, then this will be done here. We can add the new class and it will be added. In my case, I already have a person tag because I've already been working with this tool. So it won't create a new class in my case, but for you, it will. So in that case, we can now save and continue. Now we are in the po at the point where you can select a workflow and what workflows are and how they work we'll look at in a second. But we'll just take the basic workflow for now. Okay, and we're pretty much now in this main interface for the dataset. Now I mentioned we'll go look at the workflow and we are looking at this cool graph here. And what this pretty much means is we have this dataset stage which pretty much just is the collection of the images. And then we have an annotation stage, right, which follows the dataset class. Um, and here, this is the stage where you can add people, you can assign people, then they will be the, do the annotating, and then we'll have a review stage. The review stage is, is important if you have some domain-specific knowledge required, like, again, in medical imaging, where you will need, we have several people doing labels, um, but you'll need a medical professional to actually verify that they are accurate or not. And then they can tag it as complete or just reject it, and you'll have to do the, set, do the whole process again. You see that there are a few other stages that you could add here, but this is outside of the scope of this video. But the most interesting one is this model stage, where you can just use a artificial you know, network, right, to assist you with the labeling process. You can take one straight from the internet, a pre-trained COCO uh, machine learning model, for example, to help you with the labeling. Or you can train your own machine learning model and use that to help you with the labeling and constantly being, be updating the model so that it can help you again and be better. It's really, really impressive and really cool. But again, I've been talking already too much about this cool stuff because it's just too impressive. Um, but we'll now go ahead and start with the labeling. Okay, and now we agreed with this pretty interface here, right? And you can already see that there are a few tools here. We won't go into every one of those, but for example, the skeleton tool is really important if you want to have some landmarks for a pose estimation model, for example, or detecting landmarks or facial landmarks or face detection. Um, then we have the cuboids tool, which is pretty much a 3D bounding box, which is important for autonomous navigation, for example, if you want to have a 3D representation of cars. You have the standard bounding box tool, and you have the most impressive tool, the auto annotate tool. And let me just show you what this tool does. So I just drew a sort of bounding box around the person that I want to annotate, right? I click the label that I want to assign to it and pretty much the tool does everything for me. If you wanted to do this by hand, it would take so long to annotate this one person, right? And this tool pretty much automatically does so. And this very, very accurately. 
I mean, I can zoom onto this helmet here. I can see, okay, it's not pixel perfect. I can just click here and it will remove this part. Okay, it removed part of the helmet. I'll just add this. And you can see that sometimes it doesn't work, but in the most cases, it's really, really amazing. And even if you don't have a pixel perfect annotation, you can still press enter that to verify it, use the selection tool, go back to the helmet and then drag and clean up those uh, labels manually, right? So let me quickly go ahead and label this image properly and we'll see each other in a second. Okay, and that was it with the labeling. That took me a few minutes, but it was really simple. I didn't have to do any specific point correction. I just clicked for a spot that it missed out to add it to the, to the segmentation map and add it and subtract one that I thought that should belong there. Now we can also see that if we look at this nice image manipulation tool, right? If he wants to increase the brightness or decrease the brightness, we can see that we have pretty nice segmentation maps of the people with the vests, with the helmets. And this is genuinely a, genuinely a use case that you would use in industry that you could provide as a service. People in construction would, would pay probably pay for this service to have an automatic detection of such people if they have vests on and the helmets on. So yeah, I think that that was it for the image. Let's look at an even cooler tool in combination with the auto annotate tool but we'll, we'll have to switch to a video. The same process applies with the dataset creation. So we'll see each other in a second when we get to the video. Okay, and now we are here in our nice interface for the video annotation. And you can already see that it's a bit different, right? You have this little progress bar down below where you can skip through different frames of the video, right? Um, and what we now want to do is we want to annotate the corgi, right? So we have our nice auto annotate tool and we'll do, let it do its magic, right? We will draw our bounding box around the corgi and we pretty much have a pixel perfect annotation. And what we can now do is we can pretty much skip well, skip the frame ahead, right? One or two frames ahead. And we can see that the, uh, the, the segmentation map, the polygon isn't exactly on the corgi. So we could just rerun the um, nice auto annotate tool. <laughs> And we can again skip one frame, two frame, three frames ahead. We can rerun and we have again a pretty much pixel perfect um, polygon shape. But as mentioned, I skipped three frames ahead. Now the magic is that the shots in between are now interpolated. I didn't do rerun the auto annotate tool and I didn't make those polygon shapes. You can see that those little keyframes down here, those little white um, like shapes here. Those are where I actually ran the auto annotate tool. So you don't even have to annotate every single frame. You have this crazy interpolation function or functionality that does all of that for you. So again, I can just skip one, two, three, four frames ahead or whatever, and then just rerun the tool. It will pixel perfectly match the corgi. And again, we have interpolated um, polygon shapes that just match the corgi perfectly. And now we are at the point where we are at the end of this nice uh, bar with all the annotations. And if we now go ahead, there all of a sudden won't be any more. But we obviously can, but we can obviously increase the duration of the mask. And now just repeat the process all over again until we are happy with the uh, part of the video that we want to have annotated. And now if I click the playback, we can see that it's not perfect, but this is not because the um, polygons are off, but because it's just a bit laggy in my case, right? Uh, if we go back a few frames, we will see that the maps lag, um, that the video clip has to buffer a, a tiny bit. But again, amazing tool. This is so impressive. And this interpolation functionality is arguably even more impressive than the auto annotate because implementing that is really not easy. 
Okay, we're almost done, bear with me. I finally just want to show you how simple it is to export your data, right? You pretty much just click on the export data button, you create a new export, and you can now give a version name, for example, version 1.0, right? And now you can just select any format that you want. You can just select the JSON format, which is really useful and versatile, but you can also um, convert it into, a, into the Kobo format or even to the YOLO format, right? We defined here polygons, okay? And the YOLO format is for bounding boxes. So it will automatically convert your labels into the respective format that you wanted to have. And then you just export item and you can just download it right away from the interface here or also again using the command line interface. Now to my final thoughts and conclusion, I think this tool is amazing. And not only I think that, but it's also on the Forbes top 25 global machine learning startups. It just has this impressive suite of amazing features. Yes, it has the auto annotate and it has the interpolation features, but it also has auto ML features, right? You can automatically train a sophisticated neural network on the dataset that you have created. And this workflow functionality is so amazing. You can train an AI and use it to label your data or use it to assist you in labeling your data and so much more. The UI is clean and it just speeds up the labeling process tremendously. And even if you don't want to label your own data sets, you can just use one of the over 500 datasets that are hosted on V7. And all of that is for free if you are a student, professor, or a researcher. So I would highly recommend you to check them out. And if you want to see a cool project where I use V7, you will definitely enjoy this video. And with that said, as always, thank you very, very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!